Welcome everybody to this CHAMP webinar on Traxon Global Customs. My name is Bart-Jan Haasbeek. I am CHAMP's Events and Engagements Manager. And our three panelists today are Jenny Holdaway, Laurence Levesque, and Emanuela Hille. Before introducing Jenny, Laurence, and Emmanuel, I would like to emphasize that we are still working from home, and so most probably you are as well. We appreciate you took the time to attend this webinar and hope that you and your families are keeping safe. Naturally, we would like to meet face to face, and I'm sure we will again. Uh, in the meantime, we will continue to engage with you and stay connected online um, during one of the CHAMP webinars. As we are conducting the webinar from home, you could be experiencing some background noise uh, as we are not in the comfort uh, of our offices where we are better equipped. Um, before we kick off, I would like to um, address a few housekeeping items. The duration of the webinar will be around 30 minutes, including questions maximum 45 minutes. We will not show you any real data. All data is fictitious. And we would like to engage with you and learn from you. Uh, and we will launch two sets of polls. After the webinar, you will re receive a recording of the webinar via email. And during the webinar, you can ask questions using the tool uh, at any given time. And we will address them via the tool or uh, during the webinar and if there is no more time we will uh, get back to you via email and address the, the question then um, after the webinar if you're interested to learn more about tracks and global customs we are happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting with you and have an in-depth presentation Today's agenda, um, we, the introduction of the panelists uh, in a minute, then uh, the tracks and global customs, we will uh, address the challenges with ACI reporting. A product, the product highlights uh, from uh, Laurence Levesque with a short demo. And then we will show you the solutions to those challenges which were raised earlier. And again, after that, there is still room uh, for questions. Let me introduce the three panelists. Uh, in London, we have Jenny Holdaway, Champs Customs and Business Development Manager. In Luxembourg, at our Champ Head Office, we have Laurence Levesque, Product Manager, uh, Customs and Security, and Emmanuel Hille, Director, eCargo Solutions. They will inform you about the key benefits of Traction Global Customs. Jenny, could you please kick off this session before Ana Manuel addresses the challenges uh, we face with ACI reporting? Thank you, Bart Yan, and hello, everybody, and thank you for taking the time to join us today for our Traxon Global Customs webinar. Traxon Global Customs, TGC, is Champ's advanced customs filing solution specifically designed for the airline, GHA, and GSA community. We have coverage in over 60 countries and offer ACI reporting via a single interface. During the course of this webinar, we'll outline our system's key features and benefits. And I'll now hand over to my colleague, Emmanuel, who will explain some of the challenges facing companies with regards to their customs reporting. Emmanuel. Yes, thank you, Jenny. Well, more and more countries do impose advanced filing, or as we refer uh, sometimes pre-arrival filing, which it is, or like we use here in the slide, ACI, which is uh, advanced cargo information. That's the official term for that type of reporting, which is pre-arrival in that destination country. Now, uh, you could think with the globalization and increased international trade, uh, there is some form of a standard, which unfortunately isn't. Well, WCO, so the World Customs Organization, does recommend things and they recommend um, for example, a certain set of data, but it is just the minimum recommendation all customs should kind of follow in order to capture a minimum set of data, but they don't exactly explain or rule how to do it and uh, they don't limit it to those data. So each and every country at the end um, has a specific interface and if you want to connect, you need to follow the rule imposed by that customs organization. And not only that, each country actually 
varies in what they ask for, so the data sets are not the same, and also when you have to report. But even in, in, the, in Europe, you have different flavors of the same type of process. Everybody talks about EU ICS, but it is in fact not exactly the same. And the technical interface is for sure different for all countries. So most of the countries require um, filing eight hours for long haul flights and four hours for short haul flights before arrival. Some also require a message after aircraft has arrived at its destination. So there's various um, rules to be followed. And depending on the system and the customs authority you're reporting to, well, actually, you can send the data only once, and that's once up to the reporting time because they don't allow updates. This is not exactly how cargo works. We know a lot of updates are happening uh, last minute. And once data have been lodged, well, customs starts to um, send information back. And um, well, the status changes over time and then you need to share the status, the relevant status with the right people in for, in, uh, inside and outside of your organization in, in order for those people to address the problem or to, to uh, act accordingly, right? If you have a release, uh, the handling agent needs to know and he knows he can tackle the flight. If there's a problem of some kind, well, another team within your organization might have to correct uh, data or go back to um, to customs. Now, looking at staff, uh, which uh, you have to, to um, support the system or to do this uh, filing, um, well, it has to be trained. That means it needs to keep its knowledge and up to date uh, on the interface side. And also, uh, staff needs to be trained on the system should you not have one unified system. So you end up to have a lot of uh, training. Then once you have connected, you could think, well, fine, I'm done. But no, that's not the case. The custom systems also evolve technically, but they also sometimes have more data they want to have. And uh, so you end up doing constant maintenance on the existing interfaces. Uh, on our side, uh, it's typically five to 10 times a year across the countries we connect to, we have to do uh, changes. So it's constant um, work you have. And then depending on the number of shipments and specifically if you uh, report at houseway bill level, you have a lot of uh, statuses that come back from, from customers. That's very easily, uh, you, you, you basically lose your overview on the overall status, so overall status of the flight, for example. And um, if you don't have a system that allows you to do updates, um, actually, you only find out about, a, for example, a missing data element uh, once you have lodged with customs, which is then specifically challenging if this is a customs organization that doesn't allow updates, which we also have, right? So uh, that can pose a problem and additional uh, effort uh, at the receiving station. And um, uh, with a number of custom statuses coming back, well, it can be difficult sometimes to understand, well, what is the current status of the shipment? And since the status evolves over its lifetime, uh, you sometimes want to go back and understand, well, what has happened when and maybe who has maybe done which action. So um, if you only have a simple inbound queue like an email system, well, it's difficult to really have a clear readable audit trail, right? And even if you you need to get everything done, the right data quality uh, at the right time um, in order to actually have a successful filing. And if not, well, besides some operational hiccup uh, at the arrival station, well, you, you might actually incur fines on top. Okay, next slide, Badian. So um, we would like to ask you a few questions. So we, I would be, uh, I would like to um, raise a poll. Um, that sounded like a complicated process, uh, Emmanuel. And you, there are many challenges we face, clearly. So let's learn something um, from you. So the first question. Uh, is could you please select which operational model would support your needs? 
Okay, so CHAMP has a number of different types of customers, airlines, GSAs, GHAs. Um, our airline customers, some of which operate scheduled flights, some operate ad hoc flights, and some op operate both. Um, and yeah, we'd, we'd, be, we'd be very interested to find out which of those type of operations are most important to you. So if you could vote, and then we'll have, hopefully we'll have some poll results coming through in a minute there. Coming yeah, the shortly, system is collecting uh, the responses. Um, it's, it's going quite well, so keep on voting. So let's have a look at the uh, at the result. And... Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty much as we expected to see here today. Yeah. Um, traditionally, we've had a lot of scheduled operation requirement, but especially with the coronavirus um, pandemic, we've had a huge amount of ad hoc requirements. So, yeah, that's very interesting to see that because that's pretty much what we were expecting to see today. Ninety-four percent of our of um, respondents um, needing both scheduled and ad hoc operations. Yeah, thank you for that. We should have another question coming through now. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we'd love to find out which aspects of customs reporting you find the most challenging. We've given you four options there. If you could possibly select the two that, are, are face, that um, cause you the biggest challenges. So internal and external status notifications, management of rejected submissions, vendor support or on time release. We know that we know from our experience that our customers experience all four of those um, issues. But yeah, we'd like to try and find out which of those two cause you the biggest challenges. So yeah, hopefully the voting's coming through shortly and the poll results. It is, it is. Yeah. It's, uh, it could be a little bit better. Um, so now it's going very rapidly. High oh, percentage, great. So, so that's good. Let's close it and share the results for this one. Okay, oh wow, there's a massive winner there. Management of rejected submissions. Okay, that's really good and then yeah, an internal and external status notifications. That's great. Um, yeah, in some of the later slides, we're going to outline how CHAMP addresses those challenges. So yeah, stay tuned and we'll have some information for you about those in a bit. Thank you very much. So let's move forward to the next slide. Um, and uh, Emmanuel, I would like to hand over to you again. Yes, thank you, Batian. Uh, yes, allow me to go through the product highlights. So TGC is a one-stop shop solution, which allows you to address several country advanced filing requirements through one single interface. Um, it does handle multi-country rules. That is, if you have a complicated uh, rule, uh, route, sorry, uh, going through different countries, uh, TGC, based on the data, obviously we need the right data from uh, you, uh, based on the data it would automatically do an exit if it's required, an inbound uh, notification and the, the required pre-filing for the next country and so forth. So it will take um, automatically do the, the, the reporting through all these countries at the right uh, time and uh, you will see this later on in the uh, demo done by Laurence. Um, you have a dashboard indicating to you clearly the status of um, your shipments or your flight. You can do a search also. So you can, uh, if you look for a certain airway bill, you can quickly go after that. You see clearly the declaration status and in the list you will see the shipments with the problems on top of the list. They, the shipments have, and the, air, the, the, sh the flights, but also the airway bills, on that flight have an indicator telling you, like a traffic light system, uh, in which status these uh, shipments are. On top of the lights, we have also triangles uh, telling you uh, where there is, uh, um, where your attention is uh, required. The system does quality checks. So I mentioned early on, you might have the problem that in fact, you are reporting to a, a customs organization not allowing updates, but typically that's what we see a lot. So the system will wait until it until reporting time comes before submitting to customs. And in that time, up to that time, whenever you do submit data, it will check based on the, the country you want to go, it will check if uh, you are missing data, right? So it will indicate to you 
Well, you are missing the zip code. For Germany, this is a typical problem. If there is no zip code, you'll be sure you will be receiving a reject. So the system will already advise you about that, even though it has not yet lodged. So this is helping to increase the quality uh, of the, the lodgings. It does help you uh, handle discrepancies. Like I said, the dashboard and the declaration status gives you a clear overview in, uh, for you to look at the discrepancies and the audit trail is useful also to understand what has, what has happened. Some countries are quite, quite complex like the US where you want to follow the different statuses uh, the shipment uh, for example underwent. We have a so-called alerting engine. Well this is, uh, this is the engine that allows you to actually share uh, the information. It is a system which whenever you have an error you can decide who does receive this error. Is it uh, going back via uh, CETA to a specific address or via email? And this engine also allows you to um, disseminate the information on custom statuses. You can decide per carrier code, per station, per custom status, where the information where the status of a shipment has to go and with this you can inform the station manager or maybe if there's a reject the next uh, level in order uh, to have the right attention however it, it very much depends on your organization but the system is very flexible um, in allowing you to disseminate um, the information and then allow me also to mention that well yes such a service uh, has also a 24 7 uh, support this is a system support so should there be any technical problem a problem with uh, TGC uh, well you can call at any time and uh, we have the right people um, also in the background uh, able to address um, issues we are currently connected to 60 plus uh, country uh, and we are constantly um, evolving as I mentioned earlier on more and more countries bring in or impose uh, pre advanced filing so we are uh, following these trends and then try to connect uh, to those countries as to the need of our customer base, in fact. And um, the typical user groups uh, the system is targeting is airlines, forwarders and handling agents. And if I say airlines, actually it is probably correct to say airlines and GSAs, right? So I have mentioned that you we have the notion of different um, carrier codes so you can handle within one uh, instance you can handle several carrier codes uh, so if you are a GSA you can do it on behalf of an airline or the same applies obviously to a handling agent. How does the system communicate? How is the high level communication flow? Well we do receive um, airway bill and houseway bill data and uh, we need a manifest to know what's on the flight via cargo imp um, and uh, the easiest is to send um, this to uh, via the CETA network but we have also alternative ways uh, to connect uh, this information the cargo information is then processed and then um, assembled in the right format as per the country requirement and then sent to customs but once it's lodged Custom starts to send a status back, which can be a hold, a pending acknowledge, uh, or a release. Or if it is a release, like for EU, you have a MRN uh, going along with that, which you want then to disseminate. The system gets information, updates the dashboards and uh, the, the declaration status, changes uh, the traffic light, uh, obviously. And then, according to the settings you can do yourself in the alerting engine, it will disseminate the information via a CSN type of message. Uh, and CSN is a standard, so it should actually be uh, processed by um, your cargo system. And like I mentioned, you can decide to send it via CETA or in, in, in copy via email or only email, whatever is the most appropriate uh, for a way of communication for your network. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you, Manuel. Um, a quick question for you there. Um, how about customers that can't transmit data electronically? Is there a way for us to support them? Ah, yes, right. Good question. Uh, in fact, yes, there's two ways. TGC by itself does uh, allow you to enter data 
uh, manually. So you can enter uh, airway bill, household bill, and, and, and manifest data. Um, that's applicable, for example, for an airline uh, where its staff does enter data. Uh, this does happen uh, in some remote station, maybe. Uh, but for customers who want actually their end users to maybe uh, enter data, we have Freight.aero, which is a portal which allows you to enter airway bill, houseway bill, uh, and um, FFM or well, manifest data. And then from there, uh, the, the, the data can are then sent to um, the airlines or the, the, the customers' um, uh, TGC. And the, the Freight.aero is a, is a very slick um, portal geared, for example, towards forwarders. So it is very easy to capture the data there and then they are sent to TGC. Fantastic. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, before we go uh, to Laurence, who will demo uh, the Traction Global Customs, uh, I would like to invite you to um, to, to start uh, the poll, the, no, sorry, the questions within the question tool. Uh, there are a few questions that came in, but it could be a little bit more. So please do not be hesitant to uh, to ask questions. And Laurence, you should be able to take over the screen. Laurence, can you hear me? Oh, sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> sorry, thank you, Bertian. Uh, after this high level view of Traxon Global Custom, let's review in more detail how our application is, is working and how it will help you to work with your custom reporting, help your staff and your partner in your custom reporting. Let's take the example of a flight going from India to Germany. Oops. Um, yeah. Um. We have some technical problem, I guess. So we we'll resume in uh, two seconds. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's check it's working okay. Yes, perfect. Okay, so let's take the example of a flight between India, Germany, and US. So we will demonstrate the filing in three different countries with our application. What do we need to get it working? Simple, we need the application set up, of course, the flight schedule and the set of message. Set of message, we mentioned them earlier, FFM information, air we build data, house air we build data, movement information and flight schedule information. Why is the movement of flight schedule information important? It's most of the customers, as we, uh, Emmanuel mentioned earlier, are asking to receive the information either at departure time or four hours prior to departure or three hours. It's really dependent on custom. So the flight schedule or the movement will be the trigger there to send data, not too early, at the time where you don't have all the information, or not too late either. So in the present case, if we just go back to uh, our example, the FFM receive will push the messaging to India and export, and it will be sent on time. And the same FFM, FWB, FHL will be using, used to report on import side to Germany. So the same set of message will be used for multiple countries. The next question you may have is, how do I know that everything is okay? Um, there is an issue on the um, click uh, button. Let me have a look. Yeah, um, because uh, when I'm clicking, it's not working. So 
if I share my screen. You need to... One moment, one moment still, yeah. I, will, I will check. Can you try it again? Yes, okay. So we saw the one for India and now we have, it seemed to be working. Thanks, Bartian. So from here, you will see uh, your manifest view flights with a set of air wheel, and you can see right away that you have air wheel next to them, you have a different status. Some are in blue, some others are in with a yellow triangle. The one in blue, all is okay. You have already received a response from custom and they have been cleared. The one in yellow or orange are Airwebill in trouble. And you can see they are listed at the top of your list of Airwebill. So uh, your user is attracted or uh, can see them right away. He doesn't have to go through multiple screens. They are popping up right away at the top of the list. Hoping this one will work. Okay, perfect. So, uh, from this manifest view, we are reporting to Germany now, and um, you can see that you have also other type of colors in this indicator. We have limited the number of colors to four. The green means everything is okay, you are ready to report. The blue I mentioned, everything is clear by custom, you receive your MRN, for example, for EU. Yellow, you have an issue, you need to fix it. Red, you will need, you have the cargo block. So this needs a specific action. So navigating through the uh, window, you are able to see effectively your MRN number here with uh, uh, clearance on the uh, airway. So everything is uh, fine. And you can navigate from screen to screen to see the different um, information related to the uh, parties. Here you have a red indication telling you that there is an issue with the data here. So what you have seen so far, it's basically that Traxon Global Custom is working on the basic principle of discrepancy management. Custom have defined a certain number of rules. We have these rules into our application and they are checking if your, your data are complete and correct. If not, they are informing you. We inform you via this dashboard here with the different indicators, but we have another way to inform you, which is via the alerting system. How does that work? You you basically have a screen where you can define per station, per airline, airline prefix, what type of information you want to be notified on, which type of discrepancy you want to receive, and then you can notify your staff, your handling agent, uh, yourself via email or CETA. So it's the first function of the alerting mechanism to alert you when something is incomplete. For example, you have a master airway bill, you have received the FWB, but not yet the house airway bill data. So you will be notified that something is missing prior to the reporting if, of course, house airway bill filing is necessary. The second role of this alerting mechanism is to share the status with your partner and with your staff. So basically, if uh, cargo is blocked and uh, custom is asking for inspection, it would be good to notify automatically and immediately your handling agent so that they are aware and they will not dispatch the cargo onto the next departing truck. So notify you in case of errors and share the status with your staff and your partner. There is one thing also that this um, system is doing our traction global custom is a close integration with 
uh, our application, Cargo application, Cargo Spot. And basically, the user of Cargo Spot have the same visibility in Cargo Spot in terms of uh, status flag than you have in um, Traction Global Custom. They have a red, a red indicator when the air will be blocked. So immediately they see it in their air will be screen. They have a blue tick when they receive a notification from custom, a yellow triangle, or a green uh, status as well. So, uh, in conclusion, just to summarize uh, this, you have uh, a view of, um, with this system, the ability with the same messaging to report to different custom with the same information. Data is consistent through the entire application. You have seen as well that you have automatic alert and status update, real-time information, and you share this information with your partner. The dashboard view enable you to um, see immediately which uh, we will need to be checked. And uh, you are able to see the information and to go down to all the level information, the party, uh, good description, the custom status notification, and so on, all of this and the list of action that we are done uh, to your air webinar. The CSN is something you can share with your staff but as well, and your cargo application, but as well also with your partner. Archiving is one of the requirements of custom. We are ensuring this uh, as well. It's usually 10 years. And uh, we are able to process all type of incoming message, CIMP, XML, CXML. This is uh, also uh, one of the things you can do with uh, Traction Global Custom is basically to update information. If you are not sending uh, a new FWB, you can uh, effectively update the information directly into the interface, on the interface. You can um, also uh, have a view of who did update the data, when and what type of data was changed by which user. We are, of course, um, compliant with ASICUDA reporting and covering some quite uh, important number of countries using ASICUDA today. And uh, event logging is what uh, I was saying with uh, tra tracking who is doing what, but also which message did we receive at what time and uh, when was it sent to custom. And finally, also uh, data security, you are the only one accessing the, the data. So all in all, it's uh, the summary of what was explained earlier. I hope I have um, been able to demonstrate how the application is uh, working hand to end. Thank you, Laurence. Um, the world map slide there illustrates our coverage really nicely. Um, could you give us some more information around which countries we will be developing next for customs reporting? Uh, yes, we just uh, finished uh, Mali and Bolivia also is uh, finished. We are waiting for, for the go live and uh, we are testing at the moment Rwanda and uh, early uh, next year uh, it's the go live for uh, Brazil. So we will be also um, delivering this uh, custom and we are also working on uh, Democratic Republic of, uh, of Congo beside wow. update of custom uh, requirement like for Ireland at the moment. Well, wow, there's lots going on then. Um, out of interest, how long typically does it take um, to develop a new country? Uh, the shortest time was two weeks. Uh, unfortunately, it's not uh, what I can do uh, every month. So it's usually um, depending on uh, custom complexity, requirement complexity. So it can go up to six months, but usually we are between one to two months. Okay, interesting. Thank you very much. Welcome. Uh, thank you, um, Laurent. Um, let's uh, go to a poll again. So um, we again have two uh, uh, questions for you. So the first question is, um, which regions would you potentially be looking for? 
Okay, yep, so we'd love to find out some more about the geographical regions that are most of interest to you. Um, we've given you five options there. Please select all of them that are applicable to you. We've got Asia, Americas, Africa, Europe, and Middle East and CIS. From Laurence's last slide, you could see that we have coverage across all of those regions, but yeah, always interesting to find out which are most of most interest to our customers. So yeah, please select all of the ones that apply and are of interest to you. And then hopefully we'll have some poll results coming in very shortly on that. Yes, they are. They are. Um, they're, it, it's increasing now. Now it's increasing rapidly. So that's, that's, that's very well, very good. So let me share the results with you. Okay, yeah, that's pretty much exactly what we expected there. Yep, yeah, Europe and the Americas. Yeah, we've got great coverage in both of those regions as demonstrated on Laurence's slide. So yeah, that's pretty much exactly what we were expecting to see there. Thank you for answering that. That's really useful to us. We should have another quick question for you now as well. Final question. Yeah, um, we're, we're interested to find out what, what's most important to you with regards to your customs reporting. We've given you five options there, but if you could possibly just select the two that are of most importance to you um, to, out of 24 seven vendor support, ease of use and single interface, the integration with your core cargo operating system, country coverage and manual data capture. They're all um, they're all answers that we know are important to our customers, but yeah, we'd we'd like to understand more around which of those are of most importance to our to our customers. So yeah, hopefully, please get voting, and hopefully, we'll have some results coming in very shortly. There. Yeah, it's again slow voting, but in increasing now rapidly. So it's um, almost there. One moment. And I will share the results. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, single interface. Yeah, that's exactly what we offer. Um, and the integration with our core cargo operating system. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Thank you for answering that. That's really, really useful to us. Um, yeah, that's great. I'm now going to hand over to Emmanuel, who will demonstrate how, t how our Tracks on Global Customs um, solution addresses the challenges mentioned in our earlier slides. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, you have seen the list of challenges uh, early on already and allow me to go quickly through the list and uh, explain how TGC does address um, the challenges. Um, well, we said every country requires a specific interface. Here, TGC, in fact, uh, uh, does take away the complexity. You connect once to TGC as seen via Cargo Imp or Cargo XML and uh, TGC, Trucks and Global Customs, does the rest and connects from there to uh, the countries you have uh, subscribed to. Then uh, each and every country varies in the data, the exact data set and uh, when to report. TGC does actually harmonize the reporting for you. So uh, it, you look like you look, you use one system and uh, we try to guide you through a similar process for all of the different countries. Um, well. In some, in, for some customs and with some systems, you can only send data once and that uh, is uh, more or less at reporting time. Uh, with TGC, since it has a notion of the uh, schedule, it uh, actually allows you to enter the data, uh, to update data as to the reporting time, like eight hours or four hours um, uh, before arrival. The, Customs information coming back needs to be disseminated internally or externally. Here, Traction Global Customs allows you via the alert engine uh, to share the data, the right uh, piece of uh, status, the right piece of information with the right group within or outside of the uh, organization, be it via CETA or um, via email. And as far as staff training uh, goes, um, since TGC harmonizes very much and it is one GUI through which you address uh, the different uh, countries, uh, it actually helps you to reduce uh, the staff um, training and um, the knowledge uh, is transferred or we, we, we do our trainings via um, an e-learning platform. Uh, the CHAMP Academy has, um, has built courses. So there is an e-learning course uh, for TGC and um, I can share that uh, this 
this uh, e-learning course, uh, the basic uh, course for TGC takes a power, uh, approximately uh, two hours and, and then there's uh, country specific components in order for, for you to understand which data elements are relevant uh, for this in that country or if there's a specific process. That component is much smaller obviously and uh, uh, we, we hear that this is very convenient for the customers because they can pick uh, the course whenever it suits them and whenever it suits the staff. So you are very flexible um, in, in, in running those uh, e-learning uh, courses. We, we said that, that uh, customs also evolve and have technical maintenance and do change the system. Well, CHEMP uh, or Traction Global Customs uh, team uh, does take care of that uh, whenever there's a change. Uh, well, it is uh, up to us to do it and it will be remaining transparent um, uh, to you. Um, then uh, you might receive a lot of low-level statuses coming back uh, from houseware builds uh, and we have seen a lot of e-commerce houseware builds uh, in the past. They are very much increasing. Uh, with a dashboard, uh, TGC provides you a clear uh, status of example, for example, uh, flight uh, related or airway bill related, whatever you uh, want to look at. Um, I've mentioned that in some in, with some systems, you only find out uh, that you have a missing piece of uh, data only at the time of reporting. And then if it's a country where you can't do updates, uh, actually it requires you an extra step at the arrival station with the customs here. TGC does validation checks, missing piece of info or inconsistencies like Lars uh, mentioned uh, a missing houseware bill, for example, or airway bill. Um, the, the system will give you an alert early enough and with this you have a chance to actually uh, fix it before the data is lodged. And uh, with all the statuses coming back and knowing that status can evolve, I mentioned the US, which is quite a difficult one, a difficult country. Um, well, TGC helps you keeping uh, the oversight and the overview um, and keeps the status real time up to date. So um, it will help you to understand the exact status in time. And if you want to know the status it had before, an hour ago or so forth, uh, you can uh, look at the audit trail. And with this, I hope I have been able to show that uh, TGC, Traction Global Customs, helps you to address the increasing uh, pre-arrival uh, filing requirements uh, in an efficient, simple and yes, successful way. Hi, Manuel. Quick question for you there. Um, if a member of our audience today would like to use Tracks on Global Customs, how long typically would it take to switch them on for reporting? Okay, uh, I will answer in two ways. So if it's a new customer not having used TGC to start with, um, it might take a little bit longer. So for us to provision the system is like uh, in a day or two. And then uh, the customer needs to send us uh, the data. The easiest is via CETA. So this is this can be done in, in, in a couple of days and then the customer needs to uh, uh, take the e-learning courses. And now if the customer uh, needs to register with customs, well, then this might be um, uh, basically be the timeline. Uh, but if he has, for example, in Neori for EU and maybe he's wanting to go for Germany, this can be done, let's say, within uh, two weeks uh, from, from the start to the end. Uh, I think two weeks is a very reasonable uh, relevant, uh, reasonable time. Uh, we have seen uh, things happen uh, in, in, in three, four days, right? So uh, if we have to push, we can, but it depends on the prerequisites. If the customer is a TGC customer already um, and there are no um, registration requirements on custom side, well, then it is a matter of uh, switching on an option, basically. So it can be going from uh, one minute to another. Uh, if we really need to push it. Emmanuel, uh, let, let me uh, uh, ask you a, fo a few questions or to or Laurence or Jenny uh, from the audience. There are many questions coming in and we only have a few minutes left. Uh, for example, could we pull our daily reports from TTC systems to check on the data performance level of error bills and addresses non-compliance? Could we pull out daily reports from TG? see systems to check on the data performance levels of variables and addresses non-compliance. Lars, do you want to add, answer? Yes, uh, 
Um, this one is a large question, I would say. Uh, yes, we have the ability to download uh, per flight the information in Excel, and uh, and then it would be depending on what uh, the airline or the GSA or the handling agent want to to see. This can be uh, refined certainly. Okay, we yes, know so who to, to maybe who... add that we have also been working on uh, dashboards, additional dashboards uh, to provide this type of piece, uh, information. Okay, Sorry this question that. we will address uh, more in more detail to the person exactly. who, who asked it. Uh, another question is about Brazil specifically. Um, how can the end user get notified about the custom responses? Oh no, sorry. What uh, would you know? How far uh, we are with Cargo Spot integration with Brazilian customs specifically? Cargo Spot integration, Brazilian customs. Okay. Um, the Brazil custom will be developed out of Traxon Global Custom because it's a single interface to various custom. But of course, as I was mentioning in the demo earlier on, the we is a close integration with cargo spot as we have with other custom at the moment so it's uh, the setup will be a uh, cargo spot feed of information to tgc and the instance reporting to um, brazil will be um, tgc but we i can uh, also uh, clarify further with um, the participant uh, after yes. this, this call on this one but it's okay. globally the overall setup Yes, and to the best of my understanding, it's actually a setup question more than a, uh, a configuration question, more than a programming question on the cargo spot side. Yeah, I, I guess we there are many more questions about specific uh, countries. I see something about Bolivia. Uh, shall we address those um, separately, one on one? Let's let's do that. Maybe if it's specific, I don't. know, Maybe there's an overall arching question. Uh, yeah, there, there is, there are a few questions also about uh, uh, re, uh, reporting and uh, um, how do I engage with service desk in case uh, of an issue during the weekend. There are a few questions around that. Okay, the service desk um, is manned 24 by 7, and uh, the people are knowledgeable uh, on TGC. Uh, on global uh, tracks on global customs so they will be able to help you and uh, should they not uh, then they will probably they would they have the ability to to uh, do an, uh, a non-call uh, and uh, involve then um, people from the product uh, team or if really required a developer but typically uh, it is more a question on how to handle a certain situation um, so the service desk is the entry door uh, for you. There's a portal, you lodge your call, and then the service desk um, will then uh, get back to you. Once you sign with TGC, you'll you'll get the user to, to, to log into this portal. Okay. Uh, one more question uh, before we um, uh, end the, 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 the question session. Uh, we are a few minutes over. Uh, what about the support of mail reporting mandatory as of as from 2022? What about the support of mail reporting mandatory as of 2022? Is there something we should uh, address? That's one for you, yes, maybe? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I was in mute. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Uh, yes, it's something we are looking at from the analysis point of view uh, at the moment, and it's something we, we will uh, tackle with ICS 2.0 upcoming for 20. 22 and 2023 so it's okay. uh, not a near future but uh, yes uh, it need to be worked on definitely so that's an element on our roadmap uh, yes. and uh, we are following up on that yeah yeah okay Let, let's there are many more questions let's finalize this all the remaining questions including the ones we raised will be answered separately uh, to you directly um uh, thank you for attending the champ uh, Traction Global Customs webinar. You will be receiving the link to the presentation, um, and later on the presentation will also be uh, visible online and as well as the recording. And the presentation, the PowerPoint presentation, you can download already from the system, from the tool uh, which you are using at the moment. 
Uh, Jenny, any final words from you before we conclude the session? Um, yeah, uh, thanks, Bart Yan, and thank you to Laurence and Emmanuel for your technical um, demonstrations and explanations today. Very, very useful. Thank you most of all to our audience for joining us today. I hope that we've given you a good introduction to our tracks on Global Customs product. We're very proud of it. As a special thank you to you for joining us today, we're offering discounted implementation fees um, for the two week period following this webinar. And if you'd like any further information about that or to arrange um, a demonstration at a convenient time to you, then please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Okay, perfect. Thank you, audience. Thank you, panelists. Uh, many thanks and please stay safe. Bye-bye.